So we're here at Rock Allegiance with the beautiful members of Breaking Benjamin. What's up, guys? You're oh. beautiful, too. Oh, not as beautiful as you, Ben. Thank you. No, I'm jealous. Of course. Uh, you're Is that way a new more tattoo? Beautiful. Yeah. All right. It still looks pretty shiny. Yeah. What do we got here? My hairs are starting to grow back. Go. Let me see. Holy oh shit, goodness. that is wow. badass. Thank you. Looking at tattoos makes for great radio. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, <laughs> let me describe it tattoos to you. Tattoos make for great anything. It's, yes. red, and it's black. red and black. And it's a tattoo. It's a tattoo. <laughs> and that's it. It's <laughs> your imagination. <laughs> Follow Ben on Instagram and you'll see it. Yeah. There you go. See, that, that's a beautiful plug. Yeah. There we go. So, anyways, we're here at Rock Allegiance. You guys are playing, what, about like an hour, right? Yeah, man. Oh, Holy shit. Let's see. Hour and a half. You guys a little, uh, an hour and a half. All right. You guys excited for a little hometown gig? You got the lens cap on there. Huh? I know. Okay. I'm going to shoot okay. the set. Okay. Oh, very good. <laughs> you look like you were taking a picture. Yeah. Sure. yeah. You were a terrible photographer. I, was I know. <laughs> I was just as confused. <laughs> but anyways, you guys are on in about an hour. An hour and a half. Yes, yep. sir. Yep. You got, uh, this is basically a homecoming, more or less, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've spent a lot of time in PA, so we're, we're all from different places. The band hails from PA, mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, it's kind of the band's home state as a, as a whole, you know? yeah, not individually, oh, yeah. as a whole. Me too. Nice. As, home killer. Killer. as a whole day. or individually? Individually. <laughs> <laughs> Just me, myself, and I. <laughs> Or Irene, if you want to go with that movie. And and Irene, that, too, movie if she would like. Hell yeah. Movie. Hell yeah. Killer guys. <laughs> Damn straight. So, that anyways. That's making me salivate on myself. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, yeah, you are breaking out a little bit underneath that, the tattoo. That was the tape. The tape. Oh, before. yeah. The, okay. That's mm. real fresh. That is. That is fresh to death. That's, That's the good say. Uh, day before yesterday. Wow. So good stuff. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. The it's tape. a flesh wound. So how'd you feel about the new Star Wars movie? I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> two thumbs up for Mr. Abrams? Yeah, it was what we needed. Yep. It was great. After one, you did a great three. job. It really uh, did. That's what you got. And, you know, speaking of, you know, futuristic things, let's talk about the Ashes to Eden uh, video. Yeah, Ashes of Eden. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. We did it all green screened and... It's a cool concept of like a modern day Adam and Eve type thing, and so we just wanted to kind of tell the story. And uh, the director is really, really cool. Did a really great job. Yeah, it came out phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, it's like one of my favorite videos that I've done as far as the content of it and the execution of it and the, and the personal aspect of doing it with these guys. So it's just great all around. So was this your idea? Was this your brainchild? Yeah, it was like a concept I came up with, and I went with this director, and he brought it to life for us. Wow. So It did come out wonderfully. So Thank you. Yeah, big props on that. Thanks. So we got a few uh, fan questions. This is actually from Dan, my co-host, who's not here, who's actually one of your biggest fans. Rad. You actually met him once at, uh, I think, your comeback show in Pennsylvania. Cool. So he asks, uh, has your health issues shaped the sound of your music? I don't really think so. I mean, maybe there's some lyrical things that touch on that. Uh, just the vagueness of, not 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 specifically, but vaguely, you know. So I think that kind of creeped in there somehow. So there's some influences. Yeah, I would not, say. Not, you know, main not specific, influence, but. Yeah. Not specific, but, you know, the experience of it. Yeah. More so than it itself. I hear you. Yeah. All right, we also, also from Dan, because he's greedy. Uh, now that you have different members, do you plan on changing the sound or experimenting at all? Um, mm. No, I, I just think we're going to just try and make uh, good music. You know, I just don't really try to think about it anything any more beyond that. So we're not expecting like a Radiohead album the next uh, next go around. <laughs> if it's if that's what will sound good, then I would do it. There we go. Uh, I just try to make songs that sound good. I don't try to stick to any sort of thing on purpose or whatever but just to have a certain style yeah and uh just try to do the best with uh what i can and give a hundred percent and if it's not that good then at least i gave it my all you know yeah so the same thing with these guys they're doing a lot more writing on this next one and um it's just turning out really awesome nice you got some demos going well, yeah mm-hmm. all right 
I was about to say, you want to give a little bit away or no, how it's progressing? No. <laughs> Don't blame me on there. There's nothing really to give away yeah. at this point anyway. It's just riffs and random ideas? Yeah, yep, so. yep exactly. Hey, nothing wrong with that. All right, we also have uh, Dylan asking, uh, your music has helped him with difficult times in his life, and he thanks you from the bottom of his heart. He wants to know what keeps you motivated when you're depressed. Yeah, there you these go. guys are always. Uh, I mean, from from our perspective as a band, just knowing the amazing fans that we have out there that uh, you know that live through our music, it's you know, it's it's hard to be depressed when you know that there's those amazing people out there. That and waking up knowing you're with your best friends all the time, it's hard to be depressed about that too. That's true. You are traveling the world, yeah. doing what you love with the people you love. Yeah. Yes. Like how many people can actually say that? Exactly. Life? If you're not doing it that way, don't do it. Yeah, we yeah. have lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're not, we'll leave it at that. Hey, <laughs> that's cool, mate. <laughs> so, uh, Tiffany, you got anything for these fine gentlemen? What is the first thing you think of when you wake up? And the last thing you think of when you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck kind of question was that? Nothing I can say. <laughs> Why is my penis hard? Was that when you wake up or go to bed? Yes. <laughs> Both. Yes. Off the cuff. Typically when yep. I wake up. Pick it up. I believe that's called Sialis, Sean. The first yeah. thing yeah. that I think of when I wake up is... Um, I really have to pee. And then like the last thing I think of is... I, really have to I should really probably have pee. Yeah. <laughs> so that's... So it, it comes full circle. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. So. You don't want to answer that. You don't want to answer that. Well, you think about putting on a great show, and then when you go to bed, you thought, you know what? I put on the best show I could possibly do. Yes, sir. There we go. Let's just stick at that. <laughs> That's exactly what he was going to say. For there we go. Out of that. So yeah. I just got the Dave Chappelle wrap it up box. So, anyways, we like to um, we like to end each episode with a song from the band that we're interviewing. Any songs you have in mind or that you want us to play? I think our next single is going to be Never Again. I'm gonna play that. Never Again. Done. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ben. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. Eric. Well, welcome to beautiful Chester, PA. Yeah, here we nice are. little waterfront going on. Yeah, nice. I don't know how healthy the water is. Yeah, I won't go for a swim. <laughs> what was that? I said I probably won't go for a swim. No. Nah. Although I, I did see a few uh, jet skiers before, yeah. so are they brave? Are they stupid? I really don't know. So I'm also here with Tiffany. Tiffany, what's going on? Um, enjoying the weather and beautiful water and the bridge and. It's so much cooler in here than it is out there because it is, my makeup is through and my hair is through and that is it for me. How's your makeup holding up? Uh, it's doing all right. Doing all right? <laughs> your hair looks wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> A lot of upkeep with all that? Yeah. I had long hair before and it's way easier having shaved head. Now, how often do you actually go and shave your head? Uh, maybe like once or twice a week if I'm you know on top of it sometimes okay. I'll let it go a little longer but for the most part try to okay. try to keep it close. any bald spots right now or no huh? like if, if you let your hair grow in is it... yeah it's kind of thin now but I used to have really long hair I grew it out because I knew I eventually it would go away so I, I got to live with long hair for a little bit just to see what it was like and then once I knew it was getting thin I'm like alright I'm shaving it I'm going for it have you ever thought of doing the bald head long beard thing I don't think I could grow a long beard I don't know. I'd probably. I don't think it would look right on me. I like. I like clean shaven. Okay. Do my own thing. I'm the same way. Forge my own path. There you go. <laughs> and I can't even grow a beard. Like this is like yeah. the best I'm gonna get. Yeah. But I think mine would just be patchy. Yeah. Same with mine. I still haven't hit puberty yet. <laughs> yeah, my beard hasn't grown any either. <laughs> Transplant. Yeah, really. Although they don't they take it from your ass hair all, and then they, they put it on your face. They yeah, might. I think that's how they do it. Maybe the back hair, or something. If you got it. Yeah, but it's like actual like follicles too. Like nothing is. <laughs> She's fucking grossed that is out. So gross. <laughs> oh, the hell's, there's nothing gross about it. It's so gross. Anyways, you're out promoting your seventh album, Silence in yes. the Snow. How's the uh, reception for that been so far? It's been great. It's been out for going to be a, almost a year now. Wow. Um, time really truly flies fast uh, especially with touring uh, you know we've been already around the world once uh, this is our third or fourth I think it's our third or fourth US tour just on this album alone so we've been wow. really focusing on playing here uh, and putting the time in and now we're doing the headlining tour with Sabaton and Huntress and it's been great you know we, we're even playing a couple new ones from that album that we haven't played yet and we tried to um, space out 
you know, playing new songs throughout the cycle and not just play everything new right away and just kind of, you know, play different songs here and there and let people kind of get used to it. And the reception's been great and it's really broken us through uh, a new audience, especially at the Radio World and these sort of festivals. Yeah. And it's just kind of opened up the door for us and new fans. And that's always an exciting thing, especially when we're doing the headliners and you can tell, you know, the fan base is now 50 50 new and old. And it just makes the dynamic of the shows fun it doesn't feel like all right we're doing the same yeah, same course, thing yeah. same stuff and for the older fans i think it's cool for them to see like you know we're still trying to push and break new ground and it's fun you know we want our, our set to reflect that it's the whole history not just the new stuff not just the old stuff yeah so how are the old fans re like responding to the new stuff is it like again 50 50 I mean, every time you put out a new record it's like you have like a third that instantly like is a near knee jerk reaction of not liking it because it doesn't sound like something they thought it would be. You have the third that love it right away, just it clicks, and then you have the third that's kind of like in the middle and maybe doesn't even know we have a new record yet. And so like you just kind of go into the album and you just like let it out there, you play stuff, and you start to see people's perception and reaction to the record change over time, especially ones I think people have seen stuff live or have lived with it for a bit. And I was even saying to someone the other day, you know, it's hard to say how the album is received after a year. It's like, ask five to ten years from now how it's received. I can give a better assessment of, like, older records now that are turning ten or five years ago because what people think of those records is so different. I mean, we were playing two songs from the Crusade on the headlining tour last night, and it was... It was amazing because when the record came out, it definitely had like a bias towards not being a great follow-up after a sentence. Yes. But now that we've had time go by, as we you know, we play the songs here and there, but we haven't played them nearly as much as some of the others. Now the reaction to those songs is like, you know, the, the prodigal son returning. Like, of course, <laughs> like wow, this is great. They're playing these. I didn't think they would play it. I love that. And kind of interesting how time can sort of change with any piece of art a book or music and being fortunate enough to have lasted this long you can see it you know in, in real time even though it's slow how albums change I mean a, an album like Ascendancy I feel like from day one it was love and it's only grown deeper for that record but it's cool to see records that weren't initially received well turn into something new and that's a cool thing for us to witness that's true and plus with like the passing of time like a person could be going through a heartbreak like five years ago and then like revisit this album and be like okay I still have that you know yeah well we also have like now that we have a new audience sort of entering into the fray like you know from this record a lot of people that are just discovering us they have seven albums to go through so it's like they're catching up on a Netflix series <laughs> you know and, and that's a different totally different uh, listening experience. I would liken it to when I got into Metallica on Load and Reload. Oh, yeah. You know, I came in fresh years. I had no bias towards them in, like, the great betrayal to their fan base of making records like that. I just thought it was a great album. And then I went back and listened to the, the classics and, like, this band's amazing. And look at the look at the career arc within that 15-year period and what they made and the different sounds. You know, for a, people that literally grew with that band, it was different. It was like that the the line between like you know maybe the Justice for All and like the Black Album or Black Album and Load and Reload was yeah. like this band is totally lost the way and this and that. And so I look at it like we're getting new fans in, lo re looking at these records that maybe had a certain uh, bias towards them, and now they're looking at it with new eyes and new lens and. Now, when we play the songs, it's like people are like, "Wow, yeah, I want to see that. That's cool. This is a cool record." And so it's we're like experiencing that now for the first time with a lot of these records, and it's a uh, it's a cool cool place to be in as a band. Yeah, definitely. And I think like from I mean, obviously going back to your first album to now, we've gotten a lot more theatric. Like there's a whole bunch of theater elements. There's a, I hear some Iron Maiden references yeah. on a new album. Little King Diamond there too. And this is the first album to not have, you know, any unclean vocals yeah. too. Yeah. So or 
I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, the radio audience, are they, do they understand when they go back and they're like, oh my god, what is this screaming shit going on? And then they go with the new one, do they more adapt with the new album than yeah, the Yeah, I one? think so. I think people are more accustomed to screaming now, and that was something we were even talking about. I mean, we kind of came to a point where... We were making the record, and by the time we came to the end, we felt we didn't need to have the screaming. We also had Matt was having issues at the time where he was yeah. relearning the screaming, so we were kind of in a... It was an interesting point because we wrote a record that didn't need the screaming, but we also had, you know, in the back of our mind, like, well, what if Matt doesn't re, you know, get Learn, screaming yeah. back and get this new technique down? Like, you know, and we set ourselves up with a bunch of songs where the main vocal is not going to be easy for Matt to do or possible, and then it would fall on Corey. So we were kind of in the back of our minds thinking about that, but we realized that even though. Uh, you know, we have like this very diverse album or collection of albums that have screaming and singing. It's if the songs and the melodies are good, people get it. You know, I think it's like we're playing rock and metal. You know, I could see if we played, we were playing like a really pop audience. Yeah, maybe they wouldn't get it. But I, I feel like if you listen to rock or metal, you probably have heard screaming before, and it's not that shocking. You know, maybe if you listen to Ember to Inferno that would be maybe more screaming oh, than yeah, people would be yeah. expecting but I mean it's it's like when I listen to bands that had like all screaming and then became like uh, like a band like Catatonia or something you know, they totally changed there's, there's like a whole slew of like death metal bands from Scandinavia that ended up becoming incredibly melodic bands yeah. and kind of cool to, to see that evolution and um, but I mean Ember to Inferno it's the, it's the beginning so I think people can kind of graded on the curve of this is the beginning of this band and look at the evolution as opposed to like well I, I don't really know if I get the screaming or not but the guitar work and stuff is you can see the foundation for what we were going to go towards and um, that's actually exciting because we're re-releasing that record now uh, oh, wow. coming up in the maybe next few months possibly oh, that's pretty but awesome. it's coming with uh, demos uh, the blue demo which some people have but a lot of people haven't heard which has some of the songs that were on Ember but like earlier recordings and then these other recordings that are like no one's ever heard of like just some like originals that never went on past that it's pretty awesome so it's kind of it's going to be cool because I'm really interested to see with with people that have discovered Trivium on Vengeance Falls in Silence you know what they think of that early Trivium what what that was because right now they only have a sentency you know maybe don't know where it came from that you know Ember was definitely kind of like the uh, gave gave some signs of where we would have gone after after that to Ascendancy so uh, it's going to be exciting to have that out yeah and that's going to be out on uh, Roadrunner no this is uh, on I can't remember the name of the thing it's something else it's like a the record was on Life Force before and then once that deal was up it reverted back okay. to the band so I think we're putting it out through something else sort of like an independent thing but it's cool I saw the packaging it's really like amazing artwork and all this stuff so it's going to be a, kind of a an early history lesson and I know there's going like, to be a bunch of liner notes from people involved in it and Corey and I did it as well because what's cool is neither of us were on the record Oh, wow, so yeah. our perspective is from hearing it for the first time before we were in the band and you know everyone involved Jason uh, a couple other people so it's going to be cool uh, that's awesome alright uh, we only have a few minutes left um, you guys just played um, a show in Brooklyn at St. Vitus in front of like maybe 150 people yeah. were you also in the band in 2009 when you uh, played yes. at Madison Square Garden yes what was that like thinking about you know we're opening up for Slipknot and Kobe yeah. on this tour and then you're playing like this small ass area it's only a matter of a couple of years it's really crazy because uh, you know we've had that experience with a few different cities uh, London especially I mean we've we played everything from like the Barfly 100 200 cap room in the beginning and even secret shows to uh, Earl's Court with like Iron Maiden or the O2 Arena with Iron Maiden and just crazy stuff like that and everything in between places we have line Brixton Academy Hammersmith yeah and um, yeah it's cool to be able to say that I mean another great experience for us is we played CBGB's before it yeah so it's a weird I, evolution yeah I, I mean yeah. for me it's like the ultimate fan experience I mean it just is rock and metal it's like the history of playing those places because they're not 
gonna last forever. Yeah, not all very true. So to play them before they get knocked down or turned into a, an airport stall like uh, CBGB's yeah. like, at a in Newark Airport, Newark, yeah. you know, before it becomes that. I mean, it's a great honor for us because we could say, you know, we were at the the end of that, you know, when the the chapter closed. We got right. to play the you last. Were, you were there with all day wrestling yeah, history, which yeah. is cool, and uh, it's, it's something I'll never forget. It's it's one of those things you can't really like put a price tag on. It's a priceless Absolutely. experience. All right, all right. I think this is uh, the end. Um, we usually play a song by the artist, you know, closing out the interview. Uh, which yeah. song would you like me to play? Um, well, when we just brought back for this tour, it's called for. Take not the dream from in waves, and that's been a fun one to play. And okay. uh, yeah, just uh, jam that one. Cool enough. All right.